SpaceX has pushed today's scheduled launch of Polaris Dawn to tomorrow because of a helium leak. The historic mission is set to take a civilian crew of four astronauts into a record orbit above Earth, more than three times higher than the International Space Station. The mission will also attempt the first ever commercial spacewalk. So joining us now to dig into the significance of this launch, space historian and assistant professor of science communication at the University of Chicago, Jordan Bim. So Jordan, thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, great to be with you. So this launch has many firsts, including that it is the first commercial spacewalk and the farthest human space flight since Apollo. So can you just help us put that into perspective? Right, so when we think of billionaires going to space, we often think uh, of these sort of thrill-seeking adventurers who just want to get like a really good view of Earth and come back down, you know, in a matter of minutes. But Jared Isaacman, the billionaire behind this flight, uh, you know, really wants to take uh, commercial space flight and associate it more with what we uh, think of when we think of space exploration, which was science and pushing the boundaries of what is possible. So he is really trying to go for some record firsts here, including the highest orbital uh, altitude Altitude achieved, uh, you know, since the Apollo moon flights in the 1960s and 70s, and the first all-commercial spacewalk. And this will be the first time that the Crew Dragon uh, SpaceX capsule has been used for an EVA, and the first test of SpaceX's new EVA suits, which you see uh, on the screen right now. So it's going to be a very exciting mission to watch. It's going to bring back that sort of excitement that we associate historically with space exploration. Wow, I love it. Let's talk a little bit about the crew. This will also be the highest flight by a woman ever. So Sarah Gillis and Anna Menon are going to be aboard that. What is the significance of, of that? Right. So you just put uh, you just you just said it. Uh, they will be the the um, uh, the record holders for uh, for the women's altitude record. Uh, previously, that was uh, held by Kathy Sullivan, who was one of the astronauts on the space shuttle that actually put the Hubble Space Telescope into orbit back in 1990. Uh, that flight reached uh, about 500 kilometers above the Earth. So they're going to be going significantly higher than that. And even though only two members of the crew, Sarah Gillis and Jarek Isaacman, will actually leave the spacecraft to do that spacewalk. Um, it, it's important to know that the other uh, astronauts inside the capsule will also be in their suits as well and experiencing a vacuum. There's no airlock uh, in this space capsule. So all of them will be exposed to the vacuum of space, but only two will actually go outside for about a half an hour. And that is planned to happen on day three of this mission. So if we launch on Wednesday, you know, watch for it around Friday or Saturday. This may be a really silly question, but what do you get when you get higher or go higher into space and into orbit? Like, is it just a, a better view of, I mean, what, what is the goal of that, I guess? So there's actually something really important out there. It's something called the Van Allen radiation belts, and it is part of the Earth's magnetosphere that uh, traps uh, charged particles. And this can be a very dangerous environment to spend a lot of time in. But because these astronauts are only going there for a very brief period of, of you know, matter of hours or days, uh, you know, they should be okay. But they do plan to carry out some biomedical experiments about the radiation dosage that they receive flying through that area of space that normally astronauts never Never encounter unless they are flying to the moon as we did in the late 60s and early 70s. Fascinating. Okay, I want to quickly ask you about the two astronauts who are currently stuck up mm -hmm. at the International Space Station after the Boeing Starliner ran into some problems mid-flight. We know that they will be coming back on a SpaceX craft much later than originally planned. So what does that say to you about both companies and just the space industry as a whole right now? Well, this week really is the tale of two spacecraft, right? And this is the type of space history that we don't want to be talking about. This is the first time in space history that the first crewed launch of, uh, of a new type of spacecraft, the Boeing Starliner, will not carry those astronauts back to Earth. So over the weekend, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson made the tough but correct decision to have them remain on board the ISS and to fly uh, back to Earth in February with the Crew-9 SpaceX Dragon uh, capsule. So, you know, this was because uh, the Starliner encountered some thruster issues on its way to the ISS. The Boeing team and NASA engineers have not been able to understand exactly what that problem is, so they can't put a risk uh, assessment on that, so they made the correct choice just to keep the astronauts safe. Jordan Bim, space historian and assistant professor of science communication at the University of Chicago. Thank you so much for your time. Great to be with you, Jackie. Thank you.